Okay, uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, appreciate uh, the, appreciate invitation. the invitation. Just, Just to say, say that this is live, and at the moment yeah. we have uploads, so, so I'm actually, actually using, using a phone, phone to upload my voice, and, and obviously you, you can see the screen. screen. Um, so, just, so just in case anything breaks down in the meantime, this is this being recorded, recorded so, just so just so people know, uh, if they don't, they don't want to be involved, involved that's fair, fair enough. enough. Um, so, so I'm going to try and keep people use it to the end. end. It's, 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 it's a bit tricky at this end, this end to, do to do that. So, so as you join, please, uh, not that you'll know just yet, but to try and keep stay unmuted. I want to also thank Matthew, who gave me the best picture in the presentation. Um, he, has he has a Sony mirrorless, mirrorless camera, camera and he gave me the last picture, picture which is the one that was used to advertise this. So, so without, without further ado, ado this, this was, was a, a fantastic, fantastic trip to, to Jutland, Jutland, which is up on the, on west, the west coast, coast northwest coast of, of Denmark. Denmark. And, and um, it was, um, I just got to um, page, go page two. So this so was, this was a, very a very exciting, exciting journey, journey and, and it was a bit of a, a journey, journey of a lifetime and really, and really not, not just because of the diving, diving. Um, and, and, and also, also not just because, because of the photography. It was quite interesting. interesting. We, had we had a historian on board. board. We had, we had um, a, couple a couple of cardiologists on board checking, checking for bubbles, bubbles in our bloodstream. So there was a, there was a lot going on besides the fact that beautiful ships we were staying on and also some toys on it like uh, uh, recompression, recompression chambers, chambers helicopters, helicopters and things like that, that. So, uh, a helicopter. So, so we, we, we tried, tried to dive in the 100th anniversary year, anniversary was 2016, year, which was 2016. And I know it doesn't say, it doesn't year, say year on the slide. We didn't dive it, on, didn't the dive it on the actual, actual day of the anniversary, the 31st of May. May. We, we had, a I had a previous failed attempt with a buddy of mine, buddy of mine, buddy of mine, Barry McGill, who leads lots of deep dives over here in Ireland, typically off Donegal. Um, and it was, was organised by a guy called Steph, Steph who's um, very, very high up in CMAS, CMAS in, in the Belgian, Belgian system. system. Um, so there were so 28, 28 divers uh, on, on, board. on board. It, it, the, the ship, ship can, can actually take, take 32, 32 divers. You can picture, picture the ship on the left, the left there, the and Foucault. Um, and there and were 15, 15 different countries, countries represented, represented, which was quite, quite nice, obviously. obviously. Um, I think the mix, I think there was only three women, women divers, divers, which was, was probably, probably a bit low, low but probably, probably typical, typical as well, um, of the type, type of diving. It wasn't, it wasn't especially deep, deep typical depths, depths about, about 50 metres, so, so it's not, it's not, it's not super, super deep. deep. We were doing two dives a day, we were doing two, two dives a day, two one-hour dives a day, and I'll go into more on that a little bit more. Now, on the next slide, on the next for, me slide for me to there, get there, I had to come from, had to come from Dublin. Dublin. So, we're sitting, so we're sitting in the ferry port at four, six, four, six o'clock in the morning in Dublin, which is, which is uh, very, uh, very difficult for the body I had on the second trip, which is a guy called Matthew. And really, we only got over to Harwich and spent a few hours in place there, and then again, another early ferry in the morning. To get, to get across, so mm, about a third of the trip is taken, taken up just getting, getting to the far side of the UK from Dublin, believe it or not. So, so across the ship, ship to, to, to the, the Hook of Holland, and then a, then a day's driving, and it, it, the scale, the scale of, this of this doesn't really show, show uh, very well. It looks like it's only a couple of hours drive, but it was, it was a, a lot, lot of driving and very little sleep, sleep over, to over to, I think we stayed the first night in um, on, the, on the continent in, in Hamburg. Hamburg, as far as I know, we met up with somebody there. And, and then a half a day's driving quite, quite easily, easily did it then for the rest of the stretch, the rest of the stretch Denmark. up through Denmark. So I'm not expecting. So I'm not expecting on this slide to see uh, anything, uh, on, the right anything on the right hand side. It's just just to give you a bit of an, bit idea, of an idea how, how spread out the wrecks are, are over quite a distance north south. south. And, and you'll see very, very clearly from the pictures later on presentation that, that the visibility is dramatically better in the northern wrecks. So so just going back to 2014. There was, was, we had, we had absolutely, absolutely no diving at all on the Jutland Trek on, on that trip. It, it was the, the, talking, talking to people, people in general, general with other um, boats that have gone, gone up there. It literally, it literally is less than 50 50 his rate, his rate getting, getting a dive, dive there. there. So, so I, I mean, I was we were obviously, obviously very, very disappointed in 2014. We, instead, we went west a couple, couple of times, we went out, and we literally, and we literally had to board ourselves into the bunks, turn ourselves sideways, put our knees on the board, our backs on the wall of the bunk. That's, That's how, rough how rough it was. It was. Having, having got, got out pretty much, pretty much all the way, all the way to the site, site had to turn, turn around and come back. back. On, one on one of those occasions, the skipper, occasions, the skipper decided just Tim go decided to just go north and we went up, we went up so literally west, instead of going west, we north, west north and, and up, to, up, to up to Norway and we dived there. Six dives there, three days diving I think it was there. It says dive three wrecks, that's it. So 
The difficulty, the difficulty with arriving, arriving in Norway is, of course, that the, uh, the, the car charges we weren't announced. It was a bit of a last-minute last minute thing, which is which not, was not allowed, allowed, apparently, and uh, we, we were boarded. The, we, had we had a Navy smaller, smaller tender going, going around, around us, looking at us, sitting, sitting in the middle of the shore. We never actually went on the land as such, but there was a Navy guy, and eventually the next morning a bigger boat came along, a big grey boat came along. And they, and they came on, on sniffer, sniffer dogs, dogs and spent ages, ages in each room with their sniffer dogs, dogs and whatever. And I, 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 I gather they completely relieved all, all the alcohol off the ship. And there was quite a bit of alcohol on the ship. Um, both the owners, the owners personal uh, uh, wines and things and beers and, beers and anything, anything that the guys brought on board. It was a pretty dry trip, I have to say. I certainly didn't drink drink it, but... There was, guys but, in the evening, there was guys in the evening would have a beer or two, and there was quite a lot of alcohol uh, taken by the Navy guys up in Norway. So that was, a, so that was um, interesting, interesting in itself. So the, so the wrecks we dived in 16, 2016, 2016 the six of them listed there, there and I'm just, just going to look at, look at pictures and go through them, through them. A, little a little bit of history, history first, first, perhaps. So the, so the, the, policy, the policy for, for in World War I, this is, is policy for the British, of course, was to keep the Germans off, off the water, the water basically, basically. Certainly and certainly they're big bigger, bigger ships, they're capital ships, ships and they're battle cruisers. And, and I'm not, not, I'm not the world's, world's greatest historian. In his car, he's probably that brought, that out, brought out a book there, there about three, three, years three years ago, I think it was. was and, and he has a, a really, really good book on Jutland. On Jutland. That's, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the way to go. Yeah, uh, there's lots, lots of stuff on online, of course. Jutland, there's an awful lot of stuff. And there's even still debate to this day as to who won the battle, which is sort of strange. Hundred years, years later, so, so um, um, Britain, Britain had, to had to rule the waves. So basically, so basically they had, they had to keep their supply routes open. Keep their supply routes open. Think, I mean, if you uh, think uh, Britain, uh, Britain in herself could barely, I would, I would could barely, I would herself suggest herself feed herself in terms of land and, and growing things. So an so awful lot of supplies, of supplies in terms of metals, materials, tanks, you name it. Presumably metals for those and the people and Canadian troops, American troops had to come over. And the only, and the only way, way was ship. by ship. And if, and you did, if you didn't have control, have control of the seas, seas uh, you would uh, have a major, major control, control of the seas. You had a real issue in, in, any, in any war um, so, so far, uh, typically, typically so. certainly the two great wars. So, so on, 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 on the day, day Sir John, John uh, actually, actually, actually Sir David Beatty went, went out first with his battle cruisers and he got Frey first. first and, and Admiral, Admiral John, John Jellicoe was, was coming from further north from Scapel Flow, so it took him a little bit longer. Battleships typically are a bit slower. Um, so, so the, the battle cruisers on the 31st engaged with the German ICs, ICs fleet. So the, the battle cruisers, the battle cruisers, tend to go faster. Scouts out initially. battle cruisers initially. Um, um, the sudden, the sudden synopsis, synopsis is, is there was 151 British ships involved, involved and 99 German. German. Um, and, and the Germans did very, did very well, well I can say, I can say um, even, though even though they had far few, fewer ships. Um, so, you're so you're looking at scale, scale of this, this 100,000 100, sailors, sailors battling, battling for, for about a day, about a day and a half, half approximately 90, 90 miles, miles off Denmark. So, so those are the sort of stats. Sadly, Sadly about 6,000, just over 6,000 British soldiers, soldiers and just over 2,500 German, German lives, lives were lost, sailors', sailors lives. And there, were, and there were hundreds and hundreds, of course, mm -hmm. wounded, or thousands wounded as well. And, and the British, British lost 14 ships, ships the Germans 11, so, so it makes you look there, there on the stats, stats that the British, British lost, lost, but I think we'll... Um, and, um, the, ju the, ju the, ju the judgment for me, for me um, is that... that at the end, at the of, the end day, of the day, the British still ruled the waves. Still ruled the, the waves. Germans never the Germans never came out of hiding after, after that. They, 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 they locked, they locked the away the so ship. So people who people ruled the, the waves uh, really, uh, really at the end of all this, end of all this were the British. In my view, my view, they were the they victors. It was some. Awesome. Having, having said, said that, that, they didn't they didn't get a good reception when they came home. The British didn't get a good reception because they they felt that they should have pressed home and finished the engagement and completely tried to wipe out the uh, Germans, but and this, and this, I'm, not I'm not expecting you to read everything, everything on, on this slide. slide. Um, BC going, BC going, going out first, first there, meeting up with them, um, the Germans. Uh, um, um, typically, typically there was a uh, run to the run south, to the south BC, BC, and, and on the right hand side there, and then there was a run to the north, north and, and the Germans, Germans coming north, north Jellico had very, had very bad communication with, with BC, um, but at the same time he figured out somehow 
that, that um, he could cross the T. He could cross the T, and he got in a position where he crossed the famous, way, the famous of way of making sure that making sure your that guns over your the guns side over the ship. side of your ship. In, in this case, case, I think it was his right hand side, um, um, starboard, starboard side, was able to, to fire more shells, shells or whatever, whatever, whatever uh, into, into the Germans, than the Germans could do in a straight line coming towards them. Um, the whole engagement, the whole engagement fizzled, fizzled out during the night, night and, and there was sort of sporadic sporadic stuff. stuff. Some ships, Some ships, ships were which were absolutely, absolutely abandoned, abandoned virtually, well, not, uh, abandoned not abandoned by the sailors, but they were uh, stuck, stuck in, in one position for various reasons, uh, engines or whatever blown up, <laughs> um, flooded our compartments. Um, they were they were, they were just, just every, every, time every time people, people went, went uh, ships, ships went past, past on either, on either side, side they were actually beating, beating the hell out of the ship, ship still, still, still floating. floating. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it was, of course, the, as you know, in war, friendly, friendly fire, fire as well. So, so as I said, there's, there's lots, lots of this, of this online. online. You can go and go and go and look and, and, uh, and enjoy, enjoy lots, lots of reading, lots of lots, lots of debate. See there, see there, even these pictures just gives the time of the different things happening. Um. So, without so getting into without too, getting much, too detail much detail here, um, as I said, 6,000 6, people uh, near down, down to the bottom of this slide, slide 6, 000, six thousand over 6,000, 6, 000, 000, almost 100 British, British and over 2,500 Germans. I mean, it's ridiculously high death toll, particularly sailors, which are obviously difficult to train, perhaps, than somebody on the ground. At the, At the same time, time exactly, exactly a month later, later and the, the death, death toll in, in the, on the first, first day, day, just the just first, first day of the Battle of the Somme, was over, over three, three times this on, 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 on both sides. And, and there was over 19,000 19, people, uh, British, British, just, just, just British, British, sorry, killed, killed on, on the first day of the Battle of the Somme. So that, so that just shows you that it actually does put this into perspective. All very sad statistics. So, so this is this just is a picture, picture taken, taken in, in and I'll talk, talk about it later, the Sea War, War Museum, Museum over there in, over there in, um, Tiboran, in Tiboran and, and you can look at, at this just, at, and this just picture, picture, an iPhone just picture just tells the scale of what's, of what's going on in terms, uh, in terms of the amount of ships and, of ships and um, you know, you know battleships, battle cruisers, right, right down to submarines, submarines involved, involved in the engagement on both, on both sides. So, so whoever's, whoever's joining, joining, could you, you uh, mute, mute, yourself? mute yourself, please? Thank you. So, so there's, there's, there's a couple of famous, famous sayings. sayings came out of this. This. One was the, the big one was Sir David Beatty saying, saying there seems to be something, something wrong with our bloody, bloody ships today. today. And I'll, and be, I'll be talking probably, probably a little bit later, later um, on, 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 on one reason, one reason why, this why this might might be. Churchill famously said from the most famous statements from World War One was. That, that Jellicoe, Jellicoe top man, man uh, was, was the only, only man on either, either side who lose the war in the afternoon. And, and that is, is very, very poignant because if you lose, you lose the sea, the, as I said, you cannot get your materials and your troops, materials and your troops and your food in from abroad, and, from abroad, and, and mainly, North mainly North America and Canada. Canada. So that was really, really important. And perhaps, and perhaps Jellicoe turning Jellicoe away, turning away fear with the fear of, of slot, slot, torpedoes, slot, torpedoes on his capital ships. Perhaps, perhaps Jellicoe turning away and going north was actually, was actually uh, the best option because if he'd have stayed in the because fray, if he'd have stayed in the fray and he had a, he had have been depleted dramatically and the British didn't rule the seas they um, they were in, they were in serious difficulties in that war. Um, um, so it was, so it was, it was probably the, the biggest battleship, battleship fleet action action ever ever. Um, um, and the, the, the big issue, issue with the British was that, was that they actually tied, tied open some of the flash, flash doors, doors these doors that. that Allow, allow you to bring cordite and projectiles and things from the very bottom, bottom of the ship all the way up, all the way up into the turret to, to fire, fire the big guns. guns. Uh, this, uh, this was especially, especially a big gun, gun battleship, and um, big 12 inch guns, guns that sort of size and bigger. And um, so, so handling of the cordite, cordite, cordite by the British, by the there's, British there's, 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 there's books written on just this subject, just this subject alone. Handling of the cordite, handling of the cordite was seriously, seriously. Um, incorrect, incorrect really in, in terms of the way the British handled it they would they would actually stack, stack the cordite up up in up the, the elevators, elevators up, in, up the in the corridors up in the turrets, turrets. so there's so cordite, cordite everywhere, everywhere and a direct, and a direct path, path leading, leading down, down to the magazines and the reason, and the reason they did this was, was rate, of rate of fire so, so the faster, the faster you can get a gun off, off and then reposition you know refill reposition and fire it again the faster was considered the better in British parlance but Really, really uh, uh, one, one shell, shell hit in a turret or near the nearby 
is going to be nice, nice bales, and bales of cordite and that flash, flash is going to go all the way down. And that's, and that's mainly why most of the ships, ships when, they when they were hit, hit um, you had people dying like instantly, instantly by, the by the thousand on a ship. There's some of these ships had well over a thousand sailors. sailors. So, you so you could lose a thousand people in one flash, literally. literally. Um, the Germans, um, the Germans were quite different, uh, quite canny, uh, quite canny yeah. and, they and they were, were more careful, more with, careful the with the cordite. And, and they were more they were interested, more interested in accuracy, in than, accuracy rate fire, so than rate of fire. So um, that is, that is really obviously, I'm not, I'm not sure, sure of what, what, what the theory is today. Is today. You, don't you don't have these big battleships today, of course, such, but, such, but I'm, I'm not sure quite sure what the theory is in relation to rate of fire versus accuracy nowadays. It depends what type of battle you're fighting. Um, so, so Jellico was dismissed, dismissed by the end of this, which, which was very sad. Um, the only bit of Jellico you'll see, you'll see a bust of him in Trafalgar Square, Square in London, in London and, and he doesn't get an outside, you know, along with other leaders. leaders. You, don't you don't really see a lot of Jellico. Um, um, and, and there have been there have been recent very, very good documentaries in the last few years which actually bring, bring forward Jellico and that he really did make some quite good decisions. He was a very quiet man as opposed to Beatty. Beatty was a very I don't know. Oh, gung ho, gung ho, I suppose, type, type of guy, and um, prepared was prepared to engage, engage irrespective of the odds. odds. Beatty was much more calculated, calculated sort of a man, quieter man. man. So, so this, picture this picture here is, is everyone's still, still awake. awake. Yes, yes. He's, he's he's picture, picture, at some, some stage during the trip, I think, I think some of us are still getting, getting out of our dry suits. suits. And it's a nice picture taken on the deck of the Commodore Forgo. And I'm going to be talking more about that yeah. now. And there's, and there's just, just flags, flags of the nations that were, that were involved in the nations, nations I mentioned. Tied onto the railing and up onto one of the cranes. Those, those are the cranes that were used to pick us, pick us up, up out of the water, water hydraulic cranes. And um, this, this is this is, this is me, me arriving. arriving. Um, two, people two people in the jeep, jeep, jeep absolutely full, full to the ceiling. Um, and, that's and that's the bow of the ship. She had lost her anchor. She had lost her anchor. She had lost her anchor. At some, at some point, point um, um, and all, all the chains, chains and all nearly all the chains associated with it, as I remember. We did, we did, the, the captain, captain did go for a dive, for a dive and look for it during, during our trip, and he didn't, didn't find it. Didn't find it. Really quite, quite a lot of money down the drain, just in one anchor. So you can see, so you can see this the next Navy tender, which actually was, was at, the at the bottom of the harbour, harbour, I believe. I believe and him, him and um, the captain put in a, put bid, in a for bid for it, it wondered, wondered should, he should he have having sent it, sent it in and I can't remember the money, the money involved, involved. It, was, it, was, it, wasn't it wasn't a lot of money, money. it was 20, 30, 30, 30 grand, grand or something like that, like that. Paid, for paid for a ship that was underwater, it was, underwater. It was a tiny bit of it sticking up, up. And, ironically, and ironically when they, when they did, did um, obviously other people were putting in very very low numbers to try and get the ship and, and he, he, he raised it, it and um, almost, almost everything worked, worked including, including motors in case, all, all the engines and gearboxes were fine, they just needed to be flushed, flushed. and they, they, all, they all worked fine, they're still working to this day. day. So that was quite a, quite, a, quite a buy, but a lot of work, I'm sure. So this, so this is the stern, stern view, and you can, and see, the you can see the helicopter there, I think it's a five-man helicopter which flies. And I see the stern anchor there, it's a nice shot. So we, uh, so we had good weather, as you can see. Had very good weather, as you can literally see there. And the literally on the day we came back, the end this trip, the second trip, of course, in 2016, 2016 when we came when back, we came back the, the, um, yeah, weather the weather broke, broke actually that evening. So it was uh, very strange. strange. So this so is, this is mid -ships. midships. Now we're looking, now we're looking back, back the other way towards the stern, and clearly the most prominent thing is a helicopter. But on the right hand side, you'll see a white, right lower, lower, see a white disc, and that is the door into the chamber. So, so there's, a, there's a full recompression chamber in there, which um, you, can you can see somebody bending down in front of it, and all the stage cylinders are kept important starboard there along the side. So this is just a shot I took of a guy called Darren Norton. Uh, up. This was actually for the last day, and I couldn't dive, so I had my iPhone in my pocket. Um, Darren, Darren Norton and the Doberman on the left. They had those two Dobermans on board, I think. And you, and you kit it up standing by standing up. up. Now this ship, now this ship can, can take, take currently. 35, 35 technical divers, divers which is some achievement and, and you, stand you stand at these bars, bars um, one size fits all I think, one size fits all, I think. and it doesn't stop you, kidding, doesn't up stop you floor, kidding up on the floor or finding yeah. somewhere else a bench or something but you can, but you can kit up, kit up here standing up and your, and your gear goes, goes back there when you're finished um, he's, he's using it JJ there, was, there were people only three three people and not, not three the three women, women I was mentioning, mentioning but, only but only three people, people divers, divers used open, open circuit. circuit. I think right. I'm right in saying that. And, and so most people, most people are on, on closed circuit or, or semi closed circuit. 
This, this, this is the jump in. The jump is about three and a half metres from the deck down to sea. And this is the jump in. This guy's actually mid mid flight. He's got, he's got a, got a camera, camera up front. Um, he's got a stage flying out behind him. He's got a scooter on his right hand, so he's jumping into meet his buddy there to go down. And sometimes the ship is so big it couldn't actually anchor um, on the wreck because obviously you could a large anchor like that you could destroy the wreck. So, so what they did, what they did was, was you jumped in and sometimes you jumped in and sometimes you had to get a lift, over, get a lift over to the shot. I don't actually see the shot in this. Shot. Boy somewhere, there. boy somewhere there and basically, and basically uh, you've got a guy, uh, got a guy driving, driving um, rib. a rib you have a guy, a hang guy hanging out the back holding a rope on the a-frame and, frame. and he's, he's standing, he's standing on, the back on the back of a polystyrene, polystyrene board, board which is about, which is about six, six inches deep uh, and wider, wider than a diver and ropes, and ropes all down the side so basically the guy stood, stood on the back of this he tried to push it down into the water and then the diver could try and pull himself up along this thing so your face was actually by the time you got up top of the board your face, your face is actually, is actually looking down, down spinning, spinning prop. prop. You can actually see the prop down in the gap between the, the polystyrene or foam board and the engine. It's quite, quite dramatic. And then you, and then you rolled off. I, I found all the difficulties rolling off when you got to the side because the stage, stage would catch or a valve would catch or something. On, um, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a loop, there were lots of loops, rope loops down the side there. So that, so that was, was quite an eventful way to get in the water. And uh, this is Matthew, Matthew my buddy, buddy on, the time coming down. on the time coming down. And he was on a JJ. Again, he was on a JJ and mirrorless bringing a Sony. mirrorless Sony with him and a couple of lights. So to get, so to get into the detail, detail of some of the wrecks, so the wreck further south, south the visibility, visibility wasn't great. great. Um, I think that's, I think that's just, just typical. typical. I, don't I don't think it was because, because of any wind before. It. before. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going to go through all these details. I said all this stuff is online. There's an unbelievable amount of stuff about this battle online. This was one of the lighter. Cruisers, cruisers 2,900 tons, so that's quite a light ship, really, 100 meters long. Um, two, engines. two engines. So the, the important thing here is, is 10, 10 4 inch, 4.1 inch guns. So that's, so that's the, the so the concentrating on the bigger guns here. 324 sailors lost on this one. Um, um, top, top left, left you've, you've you can, can see that gun with the, the top, top on it, on it. The, gun the gun sticks off, off left to the left in the mist. Um, I'm, I'm probably, probably about a metre and a half away from this on a wide angle lens and, and you can, and you see, can how see how it just, just disappears. That's supposed to be, disappears. That's supposed to be the, the stem on the bottom left. The stem on the bottom the left, supposed to be the front of the ship, but again it's disappearing into the mist. One interesting thing is a coaling hatch, so it's a hatch in the deck near the... Um, on the boat deck, I suppose, near the railings, and you could unscrew the lid and pour in the, and the guys would well, pour in. They would typically, there was a lot of manhandling of coal in those days, and wheelbarrows and spades and all the rest, shovels. So, so you can, so you can see the visibility is just atrocious. It's very hard to take pictures at, at that. You know, when you've only got a meter and a half, two meters visibility, and that's, and that's, that's, that's uh, the visibility is quite a little bit, a little better, bit better here. But that cup, that cup is, is probably, probably yeah, um, a foot and a half from the lens. It's quite close to the lens. Nice quite white cup. But I think but everyone picks up, up on the way past and puts, and puts back, back down, so it gets yeah, sort of polished, polished here. And there wasn't, there wasn't any markings on it. I don't think from memory. I haven't given this lecture since 2017, three years. So obviously, rusty in some of the detail. The looks of um, I suppose, um, I suppose large, battle cruiser, large battle cruiser, uh, 26,000 tons. tons. You're talking, you're talking, you're talking heavier than, heavier than HMS Audacious that would, would often dive off, off Donegal, Donegal, off Mallon in Donegal. So it's uh, big enough. Um, 26, 26 and a half knots, very massive. impressive for something that weight, of course. Um, um, eight, eight 12, 12 inch guns, guns which is uh, the important thing. Um, and because, because of the explosions, explosions on this, the, the, the guns, guns are well dispersed. dispersed. One of, the, One of the interesting things, things is, is um, the, Germans the Germans use shells on even on, even on large caliber, caliber whereas, whereas the, British the British would use put in the projectile, projectile in the gun and then ram in four, four or six or, or whatever packs of bales, bales of cordite, cordite the appropriate, appropriate diameter and maybe about two foot, two foot long each, each bale. bale of cordite. Whereas, whereas the Germans, the Germans use the shells, shells right up to huge, huge dimensions. dimensions. It's hard, it's hard to believe, but the shell you see there right in the middle of the picture with the Dead, dead fingers, fingers, whatever going, going on it. That's actually, that's actually 12, 12, twelve inches in diameter. diameter. It's, 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 it's very, 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 very foot across. hard to believe that's a foot across. Three hundred millimeters. And, and there's another one thing to the left over there. There's a few there in a stack. And there, and there are the projectiles. projectiles are large, uh, twelve-inch projectiles. They're quite, quite, quite enormous. Uh, you, see you see them underwater. Obviously, obviously the magnification underwater as well makes them massive, massive too. This, this is. is 
this is an this upside, is an upside down, down one of the, one of the smaller, smaller i think the 5.59 inch gun memory, memory and, and you, you see the barrel, the barrel going off the center, center left, left. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the barrel is chopped off in this picture and just looking, looking at, the at the mechanism and the armor plate shielding, shielding that you can see so i said i'm pretty certain that this whole thing is upside down and that's the deck on the top that's just the way it landed and, and that's, that's the, the, I think it's a bow, a lot of these ships, I think this one had four, four torpedo tubes from memory. memory, so, so this I think is a bow one, one. so it's so not going to the bow, yeah, yeah, because, because I didn't see any screws or anything there, there. So, so I think this is the one with the bow, and you can see the way it's up, so the ship's upside down, so this would pop up, basically, up, basically, like a flip up, so like a flip up, to reveal the tube, flood the tube. This is, this my, is buddy my buddy Matthew. Matthew. Now you can probably, probably get a scale, scale from there. from there. You can, you can, tell, can tell the visibility. Is like I'm probably a meter and, meter and a half max away from, away from him, so the, the visibility is completely going, going at that distance. distance. And you can see the fog in the video, video lights as well. Yeah. Um, we've, we've got, got smaller, smaller shells, shells in that picture, probably about 5.9 inch, whatever, whatever they are. Yeah. So the, next so the next one we dived, number two, was the indefatigable British HMS. 18,500 18 tons, so a battle cruiser, cruiser as opposed to a large battleship. Battle battle ship. Um, I think, I think there are, the boilers are very evident in this one from memory. memory. And you've got, got um, four, four pairs of 12-inch 12 12 guns. guns. I think, I think the, guns on the guns on the... I think we're super firing. Uh, I think we're super firing. As far as I remember, some of them one one sort of mounted above the other. And 16 four inch guns, 16 four inch guns, which guns, which casemate guns, guns, which would be mounted all around the side, and, pretty two, 18 and two 18 inch torpedo tubes. Torpedo tubes, tubes, tubes on these battle ships, ships in general. In general. I, think I think battle cruisers tend, tend to be left, left and right, mounted, mounted left and right. And right. Yeah, I'm certain where I'm Germans and on Audacious and Donegal. So you can see here we're looking at the turret, which is upside down. You can see the gun center bottom and the large gun. And what, yeah. 12-inch 12 12 guns. guns, and you can, and see, you can on see on the left-hand left side, side, there should, there should be, a be a gun there. there. So the gun is the gun missing, missing there, it's actually blown off to one side. side. That, that is because of this cordite ignition, ignition that I mentioned, explosive, explosive ignition, where, where the, they got, they a got hit, hit near the turret, near the turret from, from shell, shell. You get all sorts, all sorts of energy, energy and you get an explosion. And that, and that explosion has continued all the way down to the ship and completely blown out of the ship. We actually, we actually had, had a story on board, board um, which I'll talk about later on. But he was, he was able to work out from some, some of the pictures, of the better, better visibility pictures for he was able to work out that the, he was able to work out that the coal bunkers left and right on the ship, port and starboard, were able to, were able to protect, protect and dampen, dampen the explosion. explosion. And the explosion was ripping upwards, upwards which in this case, this case the turret was not blown up. And also, and also was able, able to blow down itself downwards because the bottom of these ships were not armor plated and so much light. So he was, he was able to work out by the shapes of the steel and the way this was bent. That's, that's just the other end of that very, very same 12 inch gun. Um, turret, turret barely visible in the background. So. And this, and this is, is, a, this is one off to one side, side which, which again, again has completely, completely stripped pretty, pretty much of everything that held it in place. place. And that's, and that's Dara, Dara, Dara Norton there, I think. And, and he, and you can, and you can see, see just, just, just below his camera, camera, you can see there are like, like thrust, thrust rings, rings built, built into the gun, into the gun. Uh, about five, five thrust, thrust rings. And that's, and that's what actually held it, held it in place, place. So that's when, that's when the gun fired, fired and there was a lot of recoil that would, that would actually stop, stop the gun from uh, disappearing out the back of the turret. The turret. So those grooves, grooves, if you like, there. And this is another shot. And this is another shot, just more, detail, more detail on the, the breach. The breach where, where the, you can see a big hinge of a fair, of a fair there, there for opening the, to be able to, be able to put in your projectiles and your cordite. Again, this Again, is off to one side. I think this is the dive we got in trouble, trouble on for uh, not coming shot, shot line, line so you're so far away. And the current, the current started. started. Anyway. So you can see, so you can the, see the armor plate. plate. Um, I'm not quite sure that's 12 inch, but certainly some of these ships have 12 inch armor plates. looks a little less than 12 inch thick, obviously. Yeah, yeah. They'll be, they'll be which wrapped all around, around the center, center sort of two thirds of each of these ships. This is this just, is a, just mechanism. a mechanism. It looks, it looks like to me like a bronze, like a bronze gear, gear, and, and up on the and bottom, up on the bottom, bottom center, bottom really, center is really is where the pulley would be. So you have the caps and things on deck. This is sort of, this is sort of the bit you'd never see below decks, which is now completely everything completely blown apart, of course. And there, there you can see these rollers. These are massive, equivalent roller bearings. And these, and these would, would allow, allow the turret, the turret to rotate, rotate um, um, around, around right, left, right. Yeah, these rollers, big rollers so held in a sort of a frame. Just a massive, Just a massive sort of roller, roller bearing, basically. The bottom, the bottom right, right, you can actually, you can actually see, see the wooden deck. Yeah, so they obviously used 
very, 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 very good teak or whatever in those days, hardwood in those days on their battle, battle cruisers. Um, um, just, just all sorts of valves, valves and uh, lots of debris and porthole, the porthole port actually in the center there. Yeah. And, and this, this is one, one of the lighter, lighter guns, guns, probably, probably anti-aircraft anti -aircraft guns. guns. So, so if, if somebody has just joined, joined can you mute, mute please? please? Uh, uh, click the mute button if you don't mind. So this, so this is one, one of the lighter guns, guns that you see around, around the wreck, and they tend sometimes to sometimes even mount even on top, on top of, of some of the large guns, the large so guns as a place, to, place to mount them. Super firing, super firing, I suppose. And you can see, and lots, you can see lots of divers, divers. Bad, 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 lots of divers, different groups, different groups around, around the place. place. Yeah. None, of those, None of those three other lights were part of the body group I was in. I was the guy down the bottom right of the picture there. So just to talk about the diving. So a bit, just to talk about um, diving a bit. Um, the diving isn't that diving difficult. isn't that difficult. Now, now the were the were the twin, twin sets, and they were getting. And they were getting what, I think they were exactly getting exactly the same dive as we as, as people on rebreathers. So it's very, it's very doable. doable. I mean, the big and issue, as I said, just getting there with the weather. With the weather. <laughs> the weather's, <laughs> weather's the big issue. issue. Howling wind. The first year I went, the flags were flapping like crazy. Never never stopped. Not for five minutes. And the 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 ship really. Went out, went out twice and gave up and said, said they went to Norway. Norway. This is, this a, is a, a, I think this is from, I don't think it's the date on this, I think this is from the second time, time I went in on the anniversary year, 2016. 2016. Um, and it must, and be, must the be the first dive of the day, day yes, yes, this is the 20 hour top left, 20 hour, 20 hour, 20 and a half hour service interval. So you can, so see, you can see looking along the bottom, the bottom there, there, it's a 60 minute dive, basically. I'm obviously waiting for Matthew to get ready at the beginning of this dive. See, I'm not really on the bottom until about. 12 or, 12 or 13 minutes. Matthew um, Matthew um, has a reputation for getting ready. So, so the, 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 dive the dive proceeds, proceeds until, until about 65, 65 minutes, and, minutes and, then and then we start coming back up. And, and it takes about an hour. So an hour, roughly, roughly, roughly on the bottom, and an hour's deco. And it was, and a, it was boy, a good boy, I didn't burst any deco, didn't, deco, didn't jump, jump any deco there. So I'm a very good boy. Um, we were, we were using, using a Dilute Trimix. I think it says it there. No. Oh, it does. Oh, it does. Top, top, top left, left in blue, blue, actually, just, just where the grass starts. 1739. So we're using, so using a very delete 70 option, 39. 39. Um, helium. And that, helium. Got that got more and more, more dilute, dilute, I think, over trip, trip from the cylinders we brought because they weren't, they weren't giving us absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we were getting a slightly weaker mix, I think, in the 20s, as far as I remember, maybe 30. So, so a great factor, top middle, 2585. That's, that's very, very conservative, conservative. Uh, on the 25. I don't know. I think I might have changed that after I found I was the biggest bubbler on the ship. But, but yeah, more of that later. Yeah, more of that later. So this is the way to get so this out is the way to get out of the water. Lower this they lower this right this hydraulic, crane, hydraulic crane fair, fair right down, right down into the water. And this thing swings, swings around like crazy, of course, as they're spinning, spinning it, it in, in towards, towards the ship. The ship. There's, a, there's bar, a bar there, a bent bar on the middle of that, which I was leaning on. So you plant your feet. And, and hold on to this little tin bar, bar that's welded across, across and, and this, this thing swings around in the air. You can see the height, height. It's, it's, it's about, about three and, three and a half metres from deck level, level. Three, 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 three and a half metres down to the water. So, so good, good jump in, um, and you need to be pretty vertical to jump, to jump in. in. You need to look straight, look straight ahead, ahead. And, and coming, coming up, up, you just you need to hold on for dear life, really. I suppose. This is swung in to the right, and what happens after that is they take your stages off. And uh, you, you get, off. get off this platform, you take your stage, you hold a bar, you take your stages off, and then you walk and your, and your fins and you walk to uh, the you know, station where you take your rebreather in a standing, off your rebreather in a standing up position, as I said earlier. Tech support, Tech support is actually is that, writing down, writing down, I presume, down, I presume she is, I haven't spoken she's to her since. She's down, supposed to be writing down um, um, if you write, if you write on, on chat questions, questions and she's going to hand them to me later. Oh, oh here's a question here. Hmm. Question, question time. time. John asked. asked. He asked, he asked us about, about how, how, I how I got shot, shot with behind, behind the rib. So health, so health safety was really, really consideration. Oh, my goodness, John. John. Your oh, sense of adventure. adventure. <laughs> <laughs> mm. HMS, HMS Defense. defense. Um, um, again, again that cruiser, cruiser, so mid, mid sort of, sort of weight, weight at 14,600. 14, it's a pretty big ship. ship. Uh, uh, 49.2, 49 10, 9.5. This is probably... Are the, are the invincible, which I couldn't, couldn't dive because my sinus had just closed up on the last day, the last dive of the last day. Uh, uh, this, this is probably, probably the most impressive wreck. Four, four nine point two inch guns. guns. I know they're not big, big, thirteen and a half inch, whatever, inch, whatever but um, very, very, very impressive ship. Uh, upright, upright, which is incredible. incredible. Gun, the, 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 the guns are, are all in, pretty much all in place, and the 
the, uh, the seven half guns side, are all on the side, the and the big guns are pretty, pretty much there too. The you can see the boilers, all the engines are pretty upright. And my buddy seemed to be Patrick Valkenberg's for this trip in Belgium. In Belgium. Uh, yes, that's Patrick, super, super trim, trim and all the rest, along with Matthew. So this is, so this the, side is the side of the engine. engine. So this is so the, the side of the engine. engine. I, I, think my, my, I think I'm think i looking towards the stern. stern. I can't be absolutely certain on that now. So it's three, three years since this presentation. presentation. But you can see the height of the engine going, going on up. On up. This, is this is looking way, way back from above. There's jelly jellyfish on the top, on the top left, left trying, trying to get involved in my shot. Loading past. But you can see the engines are just absolutely massive. Massive things. Another, another shot. shot. Uh, there is a guy down sort of at the bottom there. Another guy, another guy coming in for a picture. You can see the, you can way, see the way they go off, off the diagonally left, left to right, right on the screen. screen. They just go off in distance. So you'd, so you'd, you'd many, many stages, more, more than, you know, there were several cylinders, you know, there were several cylinders, cylinders, cylinders sometimes per stage. stage. So that's why yeah. it looks like the LP. No, it's hard to tell yeah. now if the LPs on the, 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 the ones in the distance look quite big too. Um, so this, so this is... Patrick, Patrick and again, he's and he's picked, picked up a ship's, a ship's log, 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 it's called, and the little fins, fins are missing. He just, he just found, found the ship's log, log in his this, area. Is this is the thing you towed behind the boat to tell the speed of the boat, and it was a, it was a it read out a dial, a typically an analog uh, dial, then up on the up on the gunnel or whatever, on the railing or whatever. Um, um, so, that was, so that was obviously back put back where it belonged there, after we finished with it. And this is a teapot, I reckon, so the handle Rotated, rotated a hinge and big handle hinge at the back. and big handle at the back and the spout and the spout was was actually, actually a quite a distance quite a distance away, away a couple of meters away, away and I picked it up and put it over beside the pot like it looked like it fitted fitted the front, front of the pot there the spout spouts on the bottom bottom, bottom, bottom middle of the screen so obviously so obviously a brew, uh, making a brew was very important on ships as you can imagine. This is, this is, so, Patrick so Patrick is holding it, it like looks like a sort of buckle, a buckle or belt, or belt buckle, or or I don't know what it is, it's got a ship, ship anchor, anchor insignia on it, uh, I really, uh, don't, I really don't know what it is, it's a curved thing, thing um, which is said left she left there, there, along with the log, which was left there as well, uh, directly back where we found it. Um, divers, divers tend not, not to get out this far, far because it's 80, 90 miles out, they tend not to get out. On flat cam days, I'm sure you get guys going out with ribs and things, but typically things well, pretty much where they were left on so the seabed, on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the wreck or the seabed or whatever. So this, so this is one of the seven, seven and a half inch guns, guns um, that I was talking about on the side. Some of them have their, their, top their tops on them, some of them don't. Hard to take a picture of them because it's quite, quite, quite a big gun, quite long. Hard to take a picture of get everything in there, in there with any sort of light, light if you like. Just looking back, the barrel of the gun is at the bottom of the screen. Um, and you can see the scale. Um, and you can see the scale of the diver business, end, the business of the, end of the well, the, the working the working end, end of the gun, business, the business, end. business end where the projectile comes out. And, and into, into his right, right I think the next picture into his right is a, is a stack, stack of ready, ready to go, to go projectiles. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't show up. I thought it was in there. Anyway, so anyway, this is a picture, a picture by, by Matthew. Matthew. Another picture he gave me thanks to him. To him. Um, and it, and it, it's in a, just a nice shot of the same, same type, type of gun. On the, on the side of the ship. ship. This is this yet, yet one. another one. Um, getting getting a bit of light there on the on the barrel. On the, like what I call the business end there. Lots of growth, growth on it. And and you can see there's an old net. Obviously, lots of people are fishing in this area. And lots of you know, trawl net and stuff. To ropes and lobster pots, I'm sure, and everything out here. And there's, and there's, a, there's, a, there's a diver above the, the gun. You can see how small he is. And rope, rope into the rope. And there's a diver. Bottom, bottom and middle, and middle left, left of the picture as well. So he's actually quite small too in the distance there on the deck. And this was the way in. You can see and this was the way in. You can see the door is quite heavy and it's, it's an um, armor plate of some sort. And there you, and there you see the projections I was talking about, about the, uh, the uh, breach of the gun and it's, it's ready to ready go, to go um, ready, to, ready to put into the into the gun. Deco, Deco is, is I said, an hour long. long. The, the problem, problem with Deco, Deco is, is that low, low uh, about meters, 12 meters, I think, meters, I think the water was really, 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 really cool. Now, what's really cool, should I should have looked at my own chart. chart there. I think it was only about seven degrees from memory. So, so five to seven, that sort of area would have been on my earlier slide there, my, my profile. But, but at least when we got up here in sort of the, sort of the, the top six, six, eight meters, it was something like closer to 18 degrees C. So it, it was like, it was like walking, walking 
from, from a, a freezer, freezer into, into a tropical forest. forest. That was uh, literally what it felt so like. So an hour, at the end of the, the end, hour on the bottom, the hour on the bottom, seven degrees, five, six, seven. You felt degrees. your hands. You felt your hands. Using your hands, using more your hands more like the, your, fingers your fingers to, to, poke, to poke things, things with. So you're poking, poking the back of your camera, poking, poking buttons, buttons, poking settings, settings on things. You couldn't, you couldn't really. Lost you lost fine control, control in your hands. I wasn't using dried gloves. That's my fault. Um. This guy, uh, this guy Matthew, is pretty pretty amazing, buoyancy, and he's pretty good at reading books as well, as you can see. He'll read and read and read, uh, on his DK, he'll take a few chapters with him and read it. He's on it, and normally he wouldn't bother deploying, deploying a John line. He's on a John line, it's just clipped over to the main shot. shot. And the reason, and the reason he's, on he's on that is, clearly, clearly if you have, even, even in two waves, um, so, it so it was two dives a day. But, but each, each dive, dive, as I remember, had a wave of half the people. So theoretically, you could... Even though people, people are put in in a slightly, slightly staggered fashion, you could, you could have, have 14, 14 divers sitting, sitting, sitting at six meters. So, so it gets very, very busy. It means, it means you're doing your six meter stop probably eight or nine meters. Nine meters. So if there's loads of people above you, one way around this, of course, is one way around this, of course, is, is to, to clip on this two meter long, clip on this two meter long, whatever long line, and hang back, and everyone else is up there at the line. So, so at the top left, you can see a picture. I'm pretty sure it's the Yarrow boiler. I'm sure I'm correct by lots of people. Um. So, so top left, top left um, quite, quite interesting. interesting. You can so see the structures, they're absolutely huge underwater, absolutely massive. It's sort of hard to pick the, fit them, fit in, them in and yet be within this in the picture. And, and, and there were lots and lots and lots of these boilers, as you can imagine. They always, they're always very nice to find, find sort of more, 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 more personal, personal items, items almost. Um, crockery, crockery there, there and it yeah, looks, like, looks like silver plated spoon or whatever. This, this I, reckon I reckon is a torpedo tube. tube. As I said, a lot of these, a lot torpedo, of these torpedo, torpedo tubes, tubes on these ships were side, side to side. So the so right, right hand end, I look at it. Look at it. Absolutely blank. blank. You, you cannot, cannot shove in a, in a, a torpedo, torpedo to that end. So, so sometimes, sometimes I think they must have fed. I know the German been fed. I know the German ones where they were fed from outside the ship. Inside, poked in the side. Um, because, the because there literally wasn't enough width on these ships. This one, this one seemed to have a very blank end that didn't open, as far as I can see. But stand stand to be corrected on that one. Um, this is a um, this is a propeller shaft coming through, uh, coming through some, sort of a boss some sort of a boss into a bracket. P bracket. Oh, the P bracket. The P bracket is broken. So that's the bit that holds. holds it's like a it's like a, like a, it's like a bearing, bearing, thrust bearing, thrust bearing, bearing, bearing a screw shaft, screw shaft, propeller shaft, shaft, shaft through, through it, it, and uh, it has, has to be held from flopping uh, around, obviously up to the bottom of the ship. And there's another view of the you see a diver, a dark, dark diver. And, and propeller, propeller. And, and there's another view coming up in the P bracket to the right. There. So this, is so this is a view looking, looking back, back from the other side, from the from, from the, the stern, stern side, side of the propeller and the diver in the background. So the propeller, so the propeller is pretty pretty huge. Uh, this, uh, this was, was I think I think if I was reprocessing, reprocessing these pictures, pictures, I would make them a lot brighter. I would make them a lot more brighter, interesting, and a lot more interesting. Better with probably better with lighter now than, than, than it was in 2016, but. This fascinated, this fascinated me. me. Just, I, just, I don't know why it did. Uh, um, this is, this stern, is stern, which comes to a sort of point, point, as you can see in the picture, the black and white picture on the top left. And you can, and see, you can see where the captain's able to come out of a door, have his own, have his own little private bag, walk, walk around, around and come in another door, walk back, back into the same room, room again. And usually, and usually the name of the ship was, was written on the outside of the, the brass. This, and this is all brass, you see. What you see in the picture there is quite green, but it's all brass. And it has fallen down to the seabed. So it's fallen quite a distance down from the original position. A lot of the original steel on the ship there is uh, rotten, and you can, actually, and you can see actually see a sort of an armor belt, and on just and on the just the between the railing and the ship itself, there's a sort of a thin armor belt even at the back there. Um, so that, um, I, so don't know that I don't know why that fascinated me. Just the, it looked really impressive. It looked really, it looked really interesting. interesting. And there's somebody swimming up, and you can see some of that armor belt as well. Somebody swimming, somebody swimming up towards towards, towards, towards the very 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 sort of corner of the stern. It's like an apex corner. And that walkway for the and that walkway for the captain, or the admiral, or, or, the admiral or whatever. Uh, this is, uh, this is upside down, down gun, one of these smaller, smaller caliber, caliber guns, guns, as you can see, just lying there, uh, uh, scattered, scattered. It's out of its socket. socket. It's literally upside down. Um, um, I don't know if you, know if you can make uh, this out, but um, this this little brass lamp, lamp on the right, it's gimbaled. gimbaled. In other words, the ship rocks and rolls. The, the, the I think, I think it's, it's an oil lamp. It stays upright and. That's, that's what I think you're seeing in the bottom, bottom center, center of the picture yeah. there. If I have it right, am I looking in the right place here now? Um, um, hand wheels of all descriptions. descriptions. And, oh, sorry, oh, sorry it's, it's in the middle, right in the middle of the screen. You'll see a sort of a, 
plate, plate which was almost it's still got a steel, steel attached and sticking, and sticking out to the left you can see a fork right, right in the middle of the picture a fork thing sticking out to the left with a white an enemy or something on it so that, so is, that is that, that, that sort, of sort of gimbal system, system. That's, a that's a bed, bed up at the top middle that's a bed, bed. brass, brass bed, bed that's that's of course. Course. it does last underwater it does last underwater unless, unless, it's, lying unless it's lying on steel and it, it, it can degrade obviously this is one, this of, is the one of the larger guns, the 9.2 inch, and it's so you've, so you've got the gun, gun in position basically. basically. Um, probably, I can't remember, it might. I think it's in position, uh, but, uh, but loose. And then, and then sister, sister gun, which should, gun, which should be up beside it, up near the diver, is actually in the foreground. So dark, dark blob, blob in the foreground. So sister, sister uh, gun. This is, this is a, an access point for lift, it's like a lift or turret to bring up. Bring up, bring up the projectiles and the and the shells, shells and things up. Yes. A diver. A diver looking at a diver looking at a diver in that shot. Um, um, Wiesbaden. Wiesbaden. <coughs> so, so another, another fairly light cruiser, just over five thousand tons. Um, we're, 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 we're moving further north, north here now. Um, uh, almost six hundred sailors lost. Tragedy, tragedy on all ship. these ships. So eight. So eight Five nine inch guns of pretty small nine inch guns of pretty small caliber really, and then other other guns, like four torpedoes. German German being SMS, of course, and there you and there you can see the boilers tube straight, straight away, right in the centre of the picture. Ship the ship side is away, so, away so thin, and you can see it has been blown away during the action, and you can see the boiler tubes coming down. Half them are missing; they're rotten, basically. Steel has rotted. Um. Again, Again, I was talking about these, these torpedo, torpedo tubes, tubes left, left and right. This is sort of sticking, sort of sticking, sticking out, out of the ship. And, and this is going to go on to the next one now. And you can see how it's loaded. Patrick's doing a great job yeah, there, giving scale. it scale. So this, so is, just this is just taking a little, little bit around. And it's on and its, its, on its side. side. So you can see, you can see where the, 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 torpedo the torpedo went in. And you can see the guide. That whole part coming out to the front right is the guide. So the torpedo, as far as I can see, was held over the side of the ship, rested on this rest. Which is now, which is on, now on, the side, on the side and, and basically shoved, shoved, shoved in backwards, backwards into the thing, the tube, the tube before it fired. So, so it's, it's not the sort of thing you can do in rough weather. It's not the sort of thing you can do in rough weather. Um, put a torpedo over the side. Put a torpedo over the side and shove it shove backwards, it backwards into, into, a, into place. its place. So basically, so basically whatever, you, whatever load you loaded up before the battle, battle you could use during, during heat of battle. battle. I'm not too sure you can stop, stop and, and uh, get involved in this sort of stuff. I was just, I was just looking down. You can see the guide on on the left there, there to slide. slide in the torpedo, and, that's and that that is actually a torpedo there. So you can it's see it's got some gearing, gearing down on the bottom, bottom, the bottom middle of the picture. You've got gearing. some gearing at the very end, and that's probably, probably less, less than half, half the, the overall length of the torpedo, it's just sticking out in the wreckage. This is, this is a, a just a quick shot of a guy uh, uh, flying past. There was all sorts of photographic, photographic and there wasn't, there wasn't any photogrammetry, I don't think, but there was lots of photographic and video, video, yeah. videography. This guy's, you can see, you can on, see top on top of his scooter, scooter here, he's mounted cameras, cameras a, a, camera, a camera, and um, he has two lights. Even I think he has two lights, even though there's there. one very obvious there. Um, um, I think he's another light on the other side. And you can see, and you can see he's got the camera mounted at right angles, pointing over to the left as he's going along. There was, there was an awful lot of um, because, because this was a, a is a UNESCO sponsored, sponsored CMAS sponsored, sponsored trip. There, there was a lot of, lot of um, data, data recovery in terms of, of video and stills. stills. And There's a nice shot looking along the side. side. Um, fairly well armored. Probably. Fairly well armored, probably four or five inches. Six, there maybe six actually. Lots, Lots of netting, netting in the area. You can see it's, it's all on the bottom there, and it's over on the left. We actually spent some time on that net on the left, releasing uh, crabs, uh, crabs and, and uh, fish, and fish and things on that dive. A bit of time. Jelly, jellyfish in at the top there are still hanging around. And we, and we had lots of these lovely wool fields who could sit on, sit on, on a vertical plate, plate and hang, hang upside down. They were really yeah. weird. Yeah. Uh, lovely. lovely, lovely guys. Let you go really quite close to them. And they were, and they were really, big. really big. Never, I've never seen such a big one. Another one. Scats in own places, gap in own places, but I've never, I've never seen one as big as this. Um, he's probably, and um, he's probably about two foot long, decent size. Now this looks, uh, like, this a looks like a gun. Stern, it's stern, but it's actually where, where salvors, salvors have blown, blown, put, 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 a, shape put a shape charge around the propeller. This is a propeller, this is a propeller sticking, sticking out here in the middle, and just light. a bit of light from the, the video, the light video light's light. catching it nicely. Um, that, that, that is, that is um, just, just shorn, shorn off, if you like, by explosive, and they've taken the bronze propeller. 
which is worth a lot of money. Any non-ferrous metal is obviously worth a lot of money. Yeah. Both propellers were missing. So, so I, I don't know, at the beginning, some of you may have caught that I mentioned the historian. And, and uh, Dr. Dr. Thomas Ballog, he's, he's, he's a Hungarian historian. 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 And he's, and very, he's very, very active in active in, in ship, shipping and shipwrecks. Ship, shipping and shipwrecks all around. Um, all around. Um, he has taken, has taken up a job at the university since, since actually. He's still, and still very, very involved in wrecks, wrecks and programs, and programs and involving wrecks. I've, I've actually been involved with them in a program on um, um, Justitia, which, um, just which has aired in, the States, aired in the States, but hasn't actually aired in Europe, Europe yet. Um, so, so he so, is... He is, he is, one, he is of the, one of the one of the great people who has a massive interest and has written books. Um, I think one of them is 150 ships, and he's written one on on, on Justitia as well, called the Dutch Titanic, uh, because it was obviously the Dutch originally started making the Justitia at Staten Dam before it became the Justitia, which is a huge big wreck, 32,000 tons off Donegal, which is well worth diving in 70 meters. In fact, in fact, it was on the front of the Bezac magazine. Um, picture of putting the the, the uh, Union Jack on the bow they just issued there back a few years ago um, on the, an the the anniversary day, day of the sinking. Got an invitation to. Thanks to Mark. Thanks to Mark. Um, um, and Jack Ingle. So, so after, after each dive, dive you, this, was, this, this, is, this is the long, is the long table, this is the dinner table if you like, and everyone uses it as a workbench as well, the well, layout chart, charts, right. Like, right. And everyone looked at video and everyone looked at video and, and, and stills and whatever. And this particular day we were given ice cream, which is very nice. Um, so there was a lot of reviewing. so there was a lot of reviewing, um, and there's the young historian in, in the middle there, the picture in the white t-shirt. And uh, Thomas, Thomas is pretty is incredible. incredible. He can, he take, can a take a viral and, and in ten minutes, minutes having looked at um, a few stills, and maybe, maybe a few minutes of video. Within, within ten minutes, you can draw what you're, what you're looking, looking at now, which is, is a viral, viral drawing, drawing, a fine viral drawing, showing starting on the left how. You can, you can see the see the, the, the uh, Yarrow boilers. You can see all the the guns, guns along the port, port and starboard side. The seven, seven and a half inch. You can see the engines, engines going to the right, and you can, and see, you can some see some of the larger guns, guns then, which I was showing you earlier. Yeah, very, yeah, very impressive to be able to take a viral, having seen a few minutes of footage, um, and be able to do that in a few minutes. Invincible, Invincible uh, was the one, uh, I, didn't one I didn't dive, dive is the one that was used, that was used from Matthew, picture from Matthew was just advertised this, uh, again, a battle, again, a battle cruiser, cruiser, so mid sort of weight, um, four 12, four 12 inch guns, these 12 inch guns are sort of famous, famous a bit like the ones in, on the 13 and, 13 and a half inch guns on Audacious and Donegal, they're sort of famous because they're sticking up, sticking up nicely, very impressive, it's a great sight to see. Yeah, just an overview. You can, you can see, see actually, actually on, on I think on the, on the right, right there. You can see, you can the, see large the large guns, guns. Um, and, then and then just above just it, above you, it you can see one of the smaller ones, ones which I mentioned. Which is, I think, I think that's, that's a smaller gun mounted on top of it, but as, as they call it, super firing. firing. So, there's so there's Matthew's picture. picture. Thank you, Matthew. Um, dive, dive I couldn't do because of sinus. Completely blocked up. Years and, and uh, beautiful, beautiful see that sort of sticking up so Typically, typically turrets, turrets fall, so the, so barrels, the barrels would be a bit diff when, when, when a battleship battle is almost, 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 almost upside, upside down because, because they're, they're so heavy. So heavy. Um, top heavy, um, because top heavy because of the guns. Place gun guns placement is close to 100 maybe. tons, I think. So, so when a battleship, when a battleship rolls, over, rolls over, it, it one of the things, one of the things that can happen is it blows up because the projectiles that are at the very bottom of the ship are now engaging with the cordite, which is higher up in the holes. And as, and it, as goes it goes over, then, then because of the top, the top heaviness, heaviness the, these, these turrets literally, literally fall out. out. There's, there's nothing, there's no circling no pulling them in. And, and they just come off the rollers and fall out. Fall out. And they usually hit the seabed upside down in this case. I think it's up the right way in this case. As I said, I didn't get to dive it. And there's another nice shot as well. Matthew. Moving on. This is you can avert your eyes now, if you like. This, this is, is um, people, people had, had the opportunity to opt in to, to having, having their bubbles, bubbles checked uh, straight after the dive. So the idea so was you came up to the dive, your body looked after your ear, you got brought back to the most fast possible, you threw your ear on the ground, the ground your body picked it up on the deck, and you and were you still with your woolly bear on and in here, and got an ultrasonic image of your heart. 
Uh, as, as, as I said earlier, earlier there's, there's another guy competing, competing with, me. with me. I happen to be unknowns to me in the past. Unknowns to me in the past. Uh, this before I this, I happen to be the bubbler, bubbler by far. By far. And, and they were very excited, were very excited about this. About this because normally people, people have a few bubbles. Mass, had mass, had none, had none, I think. I think. Uh, uh, normally, uh, normally people have a few bubbles. They, they and, after and after an hour and a half, no bubbles. Whereas I had lots and lots and lots of bubbles all the time, and they didn't start petering out for two and a half hours. Meanwhile, everyone's sitting at the other end of this long table they're working on. And everyone's, and everyone's having, having their dinner, dinner so they're well through the dinner before we could actually, actually um, pack, pack up all this gear. And I don't, and I don't have, have the video, but I've actually lost the video, but, the video, but to, to try and, try and get, get back, back off on the guys. The guys. But you but can, you can see, see that's, 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 that's my heart there. there. And the left, the left hand, hand side is where the bubbles are. The right hand side, the aortic like side. Sorry, I'm saying the left hand side. The right hand side of the picture is the left hand side of my heart. backwards. Backwards. So, so the right hand side of this right picture, picture, the left hand side of my heart, side of my heart which, is the, which is the bit that feeds oxygenated blood, oxygenated all, around blood all around the body through the aorta. The left hand, left -hand side is a bit that comes that in, comes bubbles, in come bubbles come in that little, little black hole on the bottom left, left of that triangle, and, and, and the bubbles move up, up and, and then, then they go towards, towards the lungs. And they get oxygenated and obviously filtered and dump the CO2 and pick up the oxygen there. So those bubbles are in motion. The amazing, the amazing thing about, thing about this, this is, is that, that if I lifted, lifted an arm, arm while I was lying on the side, being um, ultrasounded, um, and when, when I lift, lift my arm, about a second, second and a half later, there'd be an extra, extra flush, flush of bubbles on top, on top of this, of this shower of bubbles here. Or if I lift the leg up and put it back down, there was an extra rush of bubbles. It was quite dramatic. And I asked him what I should do to take care of the future. No, I've never had a bad bend. And I, asked, and I them asked them what I should do, and they said, well, they said, well, well maybe, maybe don't, don't lift, lift anything for two and a half hours after a dive. She's, she's, she's quite, quite good, good in the club scene when you stand back and say, oh, I can't bring my bottle up those steps. I can't lift that anchor and I'm sure that works. Sure that works. So, so when we finished the trip, we got half a day in the Seawall Museum in 2014 when I was over. Gert from JD Contractors, who has most most impressive array of everything, including Torpedoes, torpedoes, guns, guns of every shape and size, size uh, and all the small, small stuff as well. As well. Um, had, had all the stuff stored, stored ready, ready to go, but had no museum, museum to put it in. And this was built uh, or renovated, renovated, I can't remember which, which I think it was a renovated building that they got, that they got and put in here. here. That's Matt there, there in the center. And this, and this is, where is where I got that picture from earlier, showing the scale of the battle fleet. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to skip to this because it just shows scan, you scans, multi beam scans. scans. I can't really see them. Um, defense, defense and invincible, invincible are, are near the top. top. I can read it. I don't know if you can. Indefatigable. And, <clears throat> and further, further south, south are the ones that the, with the bad visibility. Bad visibility. Now, this now, is, this is nothing, nothing to do with Jutland, only it's in this exhibition space and um, it's, it's, it's a personal, personal interest and, and matching, matching on the top right look through, through the kind car, car which, which uh, Walter, Walter Schreiger, Schreiger looked through to, to and there's a picture, picture you can see actually all the buildings, buildings, buildings there on the bottom, the bottom right, right. Uh, it still, uh, still physically works, works. And, and this is, this is the periscope that Schreiger, Schreiger looked through U20 to down the Lusitania and obviously I've dived the Lusitania several times and it's of great interest to, to Irish, Irish divers and divers around, divers around the world. And on, and the, on the left is actually the Conning, conning Tower, which believe it or not, you can actually, can actually look at through as well. Yeah, obviously, obviously, when you're on surface, you can look at through. But you would have used the um, periscope to fire that one, one torpedo into, into the Lusitania. So just, so just thank, thank the people who are very much involved in this. Obviously, you know. Um, UNESCO, not mentioned there UNESCO not mentioned there for some reason, all and buddies, all, all my buddies and all the divers on the boat. Um, and that's the picture, picture I took. That was actually ended up, ended up in portrait, portrait form, form and a cover of another magazine, magazine around here, here called Sub Subsea, which was quite nice to get a cover picture. Um, I, think I think there are some more questions, questions coming in the door here. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, John, John made a comment. The buckle, buckle with anchor on looks like hilt, hilt basket from, from an officer's sword. sword. Oh, yes. Very good. Very good. So that buckle, so that, buckle that, the that the guy was holding, the same guy's in the picture on the screen, screen at the moment. Um, looks like looks like a hilt basket from the officer's basket from the officer's sword. That's very interesting. Another comment. Another here comment here from Cahol. Um, um, 
very informative, very informative observations on one of the wrecks superstructures on HMS Defence. And I think there's something else coming in here. Um, with regards, with regards to, bubbles, to bubbles, we're diving, we're diving uh, and we breather open, open circuit. So, so and um, um, I, I was diving open, open circuit. circuit. Um, um, sorry, 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 apologies. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I was diving something else. I was diving close circuit, circuit and JJ rebreather. Same as the guy in the picture at the moment, Patrick. Um, so it, so it, it's, it's got nothing, got to, nothing do to do with it's how, it's your, how body your body processes, processes. Um, um, and getting rid of yeah, gases yeah. off gassing and yeah, it's got nothing to do with what you're breathing the only, the only great advantage of where you breather of course is that that's particularly on very very long dives longer than this one you, you do, do spend a lot of time at six meters and four and a half meters and whatever you could spend an hour at four and a half meters and it does and, and you're, you're at a very very high percentage of oxygen so it does give, give you a chance to, to try to mitigate against those bubbles and Get, get them processed, processed through your lungs and get rid of them because the, the, the big advantage of the big advantage of breathers, of course, is that you're at a constant partial, partial pressure, pressure, not a constant fraction. fraction. The problem with open circuit is you're only at your maximum partial pressure down at your deepest part of your dive, typically. There's another question here. How can you, how can you join? You join? Jimmy, Jimmy says, says, How can you join future trips? trips see these uh, the, uh, the answer is I actually don't, don't know because, because, because uh, uh, this, this particular. particular Expedition. expedition was a sort of a one-off as far as i can gather um you might you might be able to contact uh, uh, i don't know if the commandant for co is but certainly, certainly the, the people the people i went with where there was was on a club based trip, trip and, and uh, therefore the prices were uh, going, to going to be a little bit lower obviously, obviously because, because on a club based they're not trying, trying to make profit, profit typically, typically and we were had some sponsorship as i said from cms and i'm not sure if there's money from unesco they're certainly backing from unesco the, the, same the same ship, ship that Commandant Foco is, is used on, on private, private trips, trips, trips on commercial trips by, by trips by, so by commercial people. So that would be where I'd look. start to look. Other than that, I don't, know, I don't know of any ships going out that direction. And the great, and thing, the about great thing about being on a ship, of course, is you can go out there and you can stay out there as opposed, as opposed to, to a day boat. We have to keep coming back in and to go to bed and get food or whatever. So sorry, I don't have a more definitive answer on that one. And there's not much, there doesn't seem to be too many other questions. Um, I think we will end it there. Having said that, yeah, yeah, we're over the hour. I think I can hear, can hear more footsteps. Oh, oh question, question about, about camera setup. setup. I, I use a full, full frame, frame camera, the old fashioned DSLR called a Canon 5D Mark III. III. So, so I use that, that in the Hoodie Fox housing, which Naughty Cam housing, there are other housing. So, so full frame, frame traditional DSLR, which is now slightly, slightly old technology, of course. People, people are sort of moving towards mirrorless, and the housing and the housings are moving, are moving towards, towards different controls and lots of different controls and lots of buttons. Instead of having lots of buttons, they're moving towards um, more, more electronic control controls on the housings. Also, also I use video, video lights. lights. Video lights were. Um, big, big, big blue, blue seven and a half thousand lumens each, not, not used at full power, sort of half power ish, ish maybe, maybe two quarters power, depending. The big, big problem, problem you need, you need, you need some, some sort of light to be able to focus, uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise your camera will just hunt around the place and not be able to focus on anything. Number one, Number one and you need light, obviously light. I try and light the foreground, the end, the end of the barrel of a gun, and then look back towards the rest of it. These pictures don't really, I mean, I've taken, I think I've taken better pictures where I've got. Something, something nice, nice to light, light up uh, in the foreground and then obviously the background looks after itself. Uh, so it's sort of spoiled in Donegal because the best, best of the best in Donegal is, is pretty, pretty amazing. Um, but there again, you don't get that every day either. In, Don in Donegal, where, where, where I do a lot of my diving, I would, I would um, we'd, be we'd be giving out to the skipper if the visibility was less than 15 yeah. meters. Now, why, you why you'd give out to the skipper if the visibility, the visibility is less than 15 meters, I don't know. Well, he does, well, he does tend to ask, ask what the visibility is. is. And when say you say it was 10, 10 or 12 meters, meters and, and you don't get that panoramic thing, thing and you, it's, not, it's not as good for photography, obviously. So, so DSLR, the, reason the, reason the reason for the full frame is to try, to try and get as much light as possible, obviously in deeper wrecks and low light wrecks. I am, I am doing another talk, talk uh, on Malin in a week's time, time, exactly a week's time. I'm not sure if we'll have technical, technical difficulties that day. Hopefully we won't. There doesn't seem to be any more questions coming in the door here to me. So um, I, think I think I'll leave it at that.